thank you very much. That was great. Appreciate it. Uh, just a couple of announcements. One, to let you know that uh, we need assistance in our worship for the worship services. If you can sign up for that, you can sign up for a month, you can sign up for a week, a couple of weeks, every other week, whatever you'd like to do, but we need some assistance for the worship services. And also we need some volunteers for the soundboard. So if you're able to volunteer for either of those, that'd be terrific. We have a Bible study too this week. We haven't been able to meet for the last few weeks or we are back in action this coming Thursday morning. Were there any other announcements or prayer concerns this morning? Will you please rise? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who spoke light into creation, who calls us to listen and follow, who sends us to shine like stars. Let us come before God, confessing our sin. Holy and merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against our sisters and brothers and against you. We cherish the values of this world. We cause others to stumble. The earth is wounded by our excess. Have mercy, O God. Forgive us, renew us, and raise us up on eagles' wings, that we may do your will with courage and delight. Amen. Hear the voice from heaven. You are my own, my beloved. God gives power to the weary and strengthens the powerless. Be cleansed, be healed. For in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare to you the forgiveness of your sins, the revealing of God's reign. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord God, you showed your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son. As he brought gladness and healing to his people, grant us these same gifts and lead us also to perfect faith in him, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The first lesson is from the first chapter of Samuel. I'm sorry, the third chapter of 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son? He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
The second lesson is found in the sixth chapter of 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, recorded in the first chapter. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph of Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said, to him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to them, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Will the children please come forward for the children's sermon? Things are a little bit. 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. There was a fascinating uh, PBS show, I think it was last week, the last few days anyway. It was on the uh, Ku Klux Klan 
in North Carolina. I don't know if you saw that show or not, but if you get a chance to see it sometime, I highly recommend it. Talks about how the Klan became more popular in North Carolina than any other state of the country. And one of the things it talked about in this special was part of the reason why people clung to the Klan, why they attached themselves to it, was because they felt forgotten by the rest of society. These white poor people did. The Klan grew and grew. They saw there were black movements coming for people, black people to get their rights and there were marches. They felt now that they were at the bottom of the ladder, these poor white people. So they clung to this group together. They attached themselves to it, tried to promote themselves as being not only equal to, but even above, of course, others. I think we all need attached to things. We need attached to something. And there are those people in society who think that they don't attach themselves to things, that they can stay unattached, but we all attach ourselves to things. I think that's what social media is all about. We attach ourselves to certain groups. I think that's what sports is all about. You attach yourselves to a certain sports team, so you want that team to win. And there's some kind of camaraderie, some kind of feeling of belonging. They always talk about the terrorists, and the terrorists are generally people who feel that they have become unattached from society, detached from some kind of purpose in life, and somehow they attach themselves to this cause, this horrible ideology of terror and horror and death. I think we all attach ourselves to things as well as with Christ himself. And all of us sometimes look like kind of a little monster kind of thing. Attached to Jesus, also attached to greed, to envy, to anger. A child of God, attaching ourselves to the ways of the world altogether. Sometimes, of course, we attach ourselves to the wrong things unintentionally. We think we're grabbing a hold of something good when in fact it's not. But people become desperate. And we're kind of like we walk around with Velcro all the time. I think it's, I kind of look at it in that way. We really do, or we're like Velcro all over us. And we attach ourselves to this and that and different things attach themselves to us. Years ago, uh, I took a youth group up to the Bighorn Mountains um, and went backpacking, believe it or not, this guy did. My wife is always big on this stuff about camping. She loves camping and everything. Who's the only one who ever went up into the mountains camping? <laughs> Me. Slept on the ground for about 10 days. We didn't see another human being during all that time. We went up and we had Bible studies and and around the campfires in utter darkness. Of course, back before the times of cell phones and all that kind of stuff. An amazing experience. Um, I so, so loved it. Anyway, one morning I woke up, I was sleeping in the camp, and this was in um, June or July, I don't remember actually now, but it was got cold at night down into the 30s. So uh, you had to be all bundled up. But I was sleeping in the tent and I heard this girl screaming. And I jumped out of the tent and ran over and we were camping by this little lake when she had gone down there to wash her face and she had this, uh, she scooped up some water and she had leeches in the water. And that's why she was screaming. Um, I have to tell you something, you know, you know the girls did not complain the most, uh, the boys complained the most. You know what they complained about? They couldn't wash their hair. That's the truth, but it doesn't have anything to do with what I want to talk about. Man. <laughs> Leeches. Leeches attach themselves to things. That girl certainly didn't want those leeches attached to her. I should let you know, by the way, that she became a guide after that. When she graduated from high school and went to college, she became a guide, actually, in that same area. It's a trip meant so much to her. 
but leeches will attach themselves to us when we don't want them to, although there's modern medicine who purposely attach leeches to people. Doctors feel that it can help out with everything from some kind of heart problems to help with severed fingers to even flatulence, believe it or not. We attach ourselves to things sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally, sometimes we want it, sometimes it helps, sometimes it does not. Me, I attach myself to different kinds of things as well as you. And I'm sure I'm going to attach myself to a lot of stuff to do before this day is over. Some good, some not so good. As a kid, I tried to be unattached from my family, uh, especially when I was, uh, you know, in junior high, high school age. Sometimes people wind up doing that. You kind of love your family, but you still want to keep your distance from them, you know, you get into that period. I did. So there were eight of us, and whenever we went around together, ten of us marching in this little group all the time, it became so embarrassing. I was embarrassed by the rest of the clan just because there were so many of them. So if we ever went somewhere that I could be separate from them, myself and my two older brothers, I wasn't the only jerk, I'll have you know. We went off by ourselves in one area while the rest of the family was someplace else. We purposely unattached ourselves. Sin even attaches itself to the cross. Jesus intentionally took all those sins to the cross. But then we take that image, that cross image, and attach sins to it that shouldn't be there. I mean in a way like of the clan. One of the most horrendous things about the clan, I think, was the use of the cross. I cannot believe how it was used for hatred when Christ meant it for salvation and for love. My mom told me one of her earliest memories was she grew up in southeastern Ohio, um, foothills of the Appalachians. And she said one of her earliest memories was looking up on a hill and seeing a cross burn. By the way, when a clan would burn a cross, you know what they would sing while the cross was burning? The old rugged cross. Can you believe it? <laughs> Someone's doing jumping jacks right now in the back of the church. Hey, look at that. Oh, never mind. You can't see them now. They're not doing it anymore. Never mind. Forget it. See, so we're looking up here, right? We attach ourselves in one direction and we don't see the other direction. That's what happens. These, uh, I'm not sure how objective we can be in this life. I think we attach ourselves to different things. I. I know those of you who have served on juries, I, I know you did it as objectively as what you possibly could. I don't know how objective we can ever be totally in this life, though. We have all these things that are attached to us, and that's how we see things. That's where we're looking. They're having a trial of the marathon bombers now in Boston, and they are keeping it in that venue, the... Uh, they tried to get a change, the venue changed to another city, thinking that people could not be impartial. I don't know how impartial we ever are. That comes right down to it. You know, maybe the world isn't flat. Anybody believe that anymore? I don't think anyone does, do you? Maybe the world isn't flat, but you can still fall off. Make no mistake about it, you can still fall off. And it doesn't seem to be a bottom. You can fall off spiritually, you can fall off emotionally, you can fall off mentally. And when we start falling, we begin to attach ourselves to whatever we can. Whatever we can possibly grab hold of and hang on to. I love that um, old joke about the guy, I told you that before, the guy who fell off a cliff and as he's falling, he grabs hold of a limb that was growing out from the side and um, he looks down below and there's all these rocks, jagged rocks. And he looks up above and he doesn't see anyone and he starts shouting, help me, help me, help me. And he finally hears this voice and this voice says, it's God, let go and I'll catch you. And he looked up above and he didn't see anything, looked down below didn't see, see, just saw those rocks. 
and he shouted out, is there anybody else up there? And so we are. Watch out what you think you are attached to and what you're not. I'm uh, very familiar with uh, 25 letters of the alphabet. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> this gets attached to that, this gets attached to that. And all of a sudden you're looking different, feeling different, eyes that are different. I lost faith with Ohio's, um, the Ohio Motor Vehicle Bureau, whatever that thing's called, where you get your driver's license. I lost total faith in it when they renewed my father's license. My dad had a major stroke. He had major heart problems and a major stroke. And the man had no use, basically no use of half of his body. Um, and he, uh, they renewed his license. <laughs> So ever since that time, I'm sorry, anybody works for him or anything? You guys, anybody work for him? I, I just have no faith in those guys anymore. He never did ever since then. My dad told me, he said actually it was okay if he could get anywhere he wanted to, but he could only make left-hand turns. So I always liked that line. In his first lesson, it says, Samuel grew up. The Lord was with him. And this is what's really cool. Did you catch this? And Samuel let none of his words, meaning God's, he let none of his words fall to the ground. Isn't that cool? Samuel let none of the words of God fall to the ground. He caught every single one of them, attached himself to them all. Those words fall to the ground here and there. And we don't always attach ourselves to them. Augustine said, our souls are restless until they find their rest in you. There's a couple who visited Hawaii and uh, they asked the person when they got off the plane, one of the natives there, they asked them, okay, I need to find out for sure, is it, do you say Hawaii or Hawaii? And this person said, Hawaii. And he said, oh, thank you. He said, you're welcome. <laughs> See, you still don't know, you know. Attach yourself to this and not even sure what you're attached to. Some things soak in, take root. Others fall to the ground. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 22, has one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It reads, How long... O oh, simple ones, will you love being simple? How long, O oh, simple ones, will you love being simple? During the Industrial Revolution in England, um, it was very common in daycare, and they had a lot of women who had to leave their babies in daycare because they worked. It was very common when the babies started crying for the daycare person to give the babies opium. It's very common back then. It'd make them quiet and calm them down. They believed there was nothing wrong with it. They, of course, didn't understand the addiction that was there either. Horrifying today, when you think of that. Giving babies opium to calm them down. They attached themselves to that back then, didn't think anything of it. Anybody ever watched those old game shows on TV? Sometime if you have uh, cable or satellite and you have a game network or one of those things, you can watch old television, uh, old game shows. They're really kind of fascinating to watch. I saw one not too long ago. Actually, I think I saw it on YouTube. And um, it was, I, um, I've got a secret. Um, some of you old guys like me will remember that show. And anyway, the person came on and they had a secret, but they, it was sponsored by um, um, Pall Malls, cigarettes. And they had the big Pall Malls above the I've Got a Secret logo, and Gary Moore was the host of the show, and he was sitting there smoking away. The guests came on and they were smoking away, and all the panelists were in there smoking away, and they gave cigarettes to the contestants, the, or to the people that came on the show. And you just watch that and you think, wow. <laughs> We're kind of different than that today. But they attached themselves to that then. I've been meaning to read Humpty Dumpty. I finally read it the other day and uh, 
I don't think it's all it's cracked up to be, personally. Looking at Jesus, is it all it's cracked up to be, following him? Do you really want to attach yourself to him? Who knows where it's going to take you, you know? We attach ourselves to things or they attach themselves to us. We find ourselves in places that we never really believed that we would have been, we would have gone to. I, uh, my computer has some kind of a weird adware virus, you know. You ever get one of those? Uh, evidently on some stupid website, and I don't know what I did. It wasn't a nasty, naughty one, don't get all worried, but somehow I got adware on a stupid thing. Or I sent an email, I don't know what it was. Anyway, I can't get it off. And I was sitting there going through it, and I was Googling things, you know, and how to get rid of this adware stuff, and with this virus, and I thought I got rid of it, and then it pops up again. It attached itself to my computer, and it takes someone who knows a whole lot more about it than me to get rid of it. I can't. The truth of the matter is, is I have let a lot of words of Jesus and a lot of words of God fall to the ground. I can't go back and pick them up and put them into myself, put them into my ears, put them into my heart. What's gone is gone. But God offers new hope. And he offers his word again with new possibilities of peace and new possibilities of love. This guy went to his friend's house to watch a movie and his, uh, his friend's dog was sitting there watching a movie with him and it was obvious that the dog was really getting into the thing. He stared at the screen and at exciting times he kind of shivered and, and funny times he seemed to laugh, you know, and, and uh, he was just getting into this whole film. And the other guys, uh, the other guys said, uh, I'm really surprised your dog likes this movie so much. And the guy said, I know he hated the book. Some people believe dogs are capable of recognizing over a thousand words. Did you know that? They say some dogs are that smart. I don't think mine is, God bless her, but see some dogs can recognize over a thousand words. They don't fall to the ground as much as what we think. John 1, verse 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. We need to stay attached to that Word, which is a very, very difficult thing to do. We intentionally let go. Sometimes other things seem to pull us away. We become unattached. But Jesus does not give up that easily. He gives us his word on that. We must not let that word fall to the ground. Amen.
us make confession of our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in Pontius was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Called to know, love, and follow you, O oh God, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, speak to your listening church and send it to point eagerly to the many ways in which you reveal your life-giving presence. Lord, in your mercy. Renew the face of the earth. Heal the wounds human carelessness inflicts on creation and rouse us to increase our care of land and waters. Lord, in your mercy. Restore and strengthen world leaders. Give them a clear vision of your power to move hearts and minds and enable them to act with justice and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Fill our congregation with renewed zeal to love our neighbor as you love us. Open our mouths to invite friends and neighbors to come and see you. Lord, in your mercy. We bless you for revealing yourself in the saints. Bring us with them into the fullness of your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Refresh the depressed and despairing. Comfort those who weep and mourn. Give companionship to the lonely and healing to the sick. We keep in our prayers this morning, Alexa Jennings, Alfred and Rita Priggy, Alice Leidenhop, Allie Gray Small, Alice Oberhaus, Amber Lucas, Amos Showman, and Andrew Williams, Arlene Miller, Arlita Panning, Art Neoto Pedraza, and Audrey Schrader. For Becky, Beth Jenny, Bethany Wolf, Betty Mowry, and Bill Winsman, Bob and Esther Denny, and Bonnie Palomara, Brennan, Brent Leiter, Brent Thompson. For Carly Knowles, Carol Berlin, Cass Bolton, Charlotte Wongren, Chris Schmidtmeyer, Colleen Cable, Crystal Garcia, and Dave and Betty Meyer. For Deb Schenk, Deb Tiffany, Donelda Roars, Dick Brown, and Don and Susan Dravis. For Donna Norton, Dustin Brown, Eileen Maybe, Eleanor Engler, and Emma Myers. Fred Close, Gary Weaver, George and Cindy Pope, George Kreider, and Hunter Carnahan. For Irene Cordes, Jackie, Jamie Bosselman, Jeannie Curtis, Jeff Brown, Jeff Warner, and Josh Badenhop. For Josh Bevel, Joshua Jenny, and Juanita Clausen. For KT, Caden Michaelis, Carolyn Tongis, Kelly Garst, Kelly Troyer, Ken Ludeman, and Kim Corder. For London, Landon Zunk, Lottie Schaefer, Lynn Colby, and Linda Hill. For Linda and Linda Lofts. Lois Weekers, Lois Plotz, and Lorna Bosselman, Louisa Bevel, and Lucas Rosebook. For Lucas King, Lucas, Lucy Zwiebel, Marjorie Downs, Mar Marie Panning, Marlene Kreider, Mary Rohrbaugh, and Mary Brown. For Mary Marion, Mary Lou Zwiebel, Melanie Simpson, Millie Miller, Miranda Schenk, Naomi Rhodes, Nor Brandt, and Pat Badenhop. We pray for Patsy McGinnis, Paul Panning, Paul Cousineau, Paul Long, Richard Hoover, Robert Plasman, Roma Brown, Roman Strom, Ron Roth, Rudy Eikhoff, and Russ Van Meter. For Sandy Borselman and Sandy Bosselman, for Sarah Lenhart, Shirley Myers Phages, Susan Allen, Tammy Porter, Ted Titkenmeyer, Terry Doda, Tom Badenhop, Tom and Eleanor Morgan, and for Valerie, for all those we name now in our hearts.
Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those in our congregational family who will be celebrating their birthdays in this coming week. Those people include Ben DeWitt, Leota Pedraza, Leo Clausen Jr., Marilyn Manahan, Brandon Nation, Tyler Allison, Barton, Bart Ankney, Art Pedraza, Allison Storch, Morgan Ashball, and Robert Walker. We pray on their anniversary for Ken and Nancy Lang. We also pray for those serving in the military from this our congregation and this our country, including Mike Demache, Tyler Hayes, and Jessica Reed. Be with them all and bless them and keep them in your heavenly grace. Trusting your love and healing, O God, we commend to you all for whom we pray, knowing you will hear and answer. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>